Hello and welcome to another unboxing video, um, another episode where I just uh, do some quick unboxings of recent purchases on eBay just to make sure everything's okay and as described. Um, this episode is all Commodore themed, so lots of Commodore goodies. So let's get started. Oh, so that's a cartridge. There we go. Is it a menagerie? I don't think I've actually seen the gameplay of that. The box is a bit squashed, but it was in the uh, description as being squashed, so there we go. I do like the uh, VIC-20 cartridges, there's something about them. This one's in very good condition actually. It's not very worn at all. Um, a lot of the ones I have are quite faded, and this the plastic feels different on this one. It's in the later box as well looking at it, so... Some of this stuff I bought a few weeks ago now. Um, you forget what you bought. Another load of cartridges. So there may be some things in here that aren't Commodore related that I've got mixed up. It's an unusual one. It's in a clear case. Ah, oh, 3K RAM expansion. In a clear case. I guess the original case must have been damaged and they put it in a custom case. TTW8B.com, VIC-20 cartridge case. What else have we got here? Superlander, 1907. Oh wow, that one is in very good condition. In fact, it doesn't even look like it's been in a machine. I could just about see a little bit of scoring on there. Amazing. This one's, you can see this one's been used. Amiga Race, I have that already actually. That's some of the problems with buying a bundle. You end up buying lots of ones you've already got. Jelly Monsters. I think if I remember rightly, that's the Pac-Man clone. The Count. I think that's a learning cartridge from what I can remember. Pirate's Cove, I've already got that one as well, but that's in really good condition. It's amazing how the packaging varies actually, because these have actually got aluminium on them. In fact, that looks like it's still got the protective coating over it. It has. Wow. I shall leave that on there though. What's the next one? I think of this one. Let's have a look. If I remember rightly. Yes, it is. Plus four cartridges. There we go. Atomic Mission. I've never seen these before, actually. So this is the first for me. <coughs> And Pirate Adventure, Pirate Cove and Pirate Adventure. I should imagine they're text-based games. There we go, that's those. Nice to have a couple of cartridges actually. It says waiting for a game to load to do a test. Let's see what we've got in here. It's been well packed. Ah, oh, it's the uh, Genlock, the Amiga. Uh, Reddell Genlock 8802. It's the user manual there. That's in good condition. You can have quite a lot of fun with the Genlock. It lets you superimpose Amiga graphics over video. So you can do titling and uh, animations. These were used quite a lot in uh, movies back in the day. You can do effects with like um, what robots see, grid effects and things. That'll be the controller. So you've got external video, foreground, Amiga only, keyhole one or two. Uh, so that's the monitor out for a guess. Composite video out, composite video in. Very nice. Another small one, I think that's a cartridge again. Cosmic Crunch. Remember rightly, that's another Pac-Man clone. It's got the, um, instead of Pac-Man, it's got the little Commodore, um, Commodore logo as Pac-Man. Uh, that one's been well played. Another one to the collection. That sounds like a tape. Ah, there we go. A Trojan light pen for the Commodore Plus 4. Discover the exciting world of creating your own graphics on screen. Use of the, tro the Trojan light pen will enable you to 
draw a picture freehand on the screen, draw a box, draw a circle, draw a line, <laughs> color fill designated area, save screen to tape disc, load tape disc to screen. High resolution apparently. Glorious 640 by 480. The package is in really good condition. Always wanted a light pen, never actually seen one in action before. And there's a data tape in there for it. Trojan light pen with the Commodore Plus 4. Looking at the little pad on the where the heads go, it doesn't look like it's even been used. Nice one for the collection. I'll pop that back in there later. I don't want to damage the box. What we got left now? Uh, two here. Let's do this one next. Uh, I've been wanting one of these for a very long time. Here we go. Commodore Amiga disk drive, a 1010. Wow. In the box as well. Can't remember how much I pay for this now. What did I pay? I think I paid quite a bit for it. I say I've been wanting one for a long time. It's even got the instruction manual. Wow. Carefully take this out so I don't damage the polystyrene. This time is in amazing condition. Yes, it's a bit yellowed. Oh, so big. Massive. I've got another one to hand. Compare it with, I haven't. I can, oh, can I reach over? So that's your standard floppy, uh, three and a half inch floppy external drive for an Amiga. On top of that one there. Big difference, isn't there, in size? I wonder why it needs to be so big. I think that's what attracted me to it. You can see it's been in the sun because the bleaching has gone past, or that way, because it's uh, still original colour in the insert there. That would certainly be a retro writing project. There's the original colour, look. Wow. So it's completely clean on that side and the other side. It's all yellowed on that side. It's in very good condition though, apart from that. It'll be very interesting to see if it works. I'll have to look back at the listing and see what they said. Probably says untested, as most things do. It's been well packed. Horrible polystyrene sheeting. Ah, I remember now. It's an original Commodore tape drive. the box again. Wow, look at that. I haven't seen one of these since I was a kid. I must have been about 13. Such an unusual plug. It almost looks like it pro probably just goes straight to the Commodore PET. Instruction manual. C -A -C C2N take cassette. Manual's in really good condition. Yes, it's got the Commodore PET on there. I'd love to own one of those one day. It's, uh, it's space though, they're just so big. Well, I imagine them to be big. I've never actually seen one in person. Oh, the polystyrene started to break down slightly. This has probably been in storage for years. Little dust cover for it. Well, God. I haven't seen one of these in so long. There we go. Well, sometimes you see those burn marks on things. And basically, it's a reaction to the plastic from the cable to the plastic on the cabinet. It almost looks like a soldering iron burn. That's it. The uh, pinch wheel certainly got a lot of brown on it from the tape oxidisation. But that's it for this episode. Um, I'm sure there'll be something else for me to unwrap soon. 
as always thank you for watching uh, if you did like it please consider liking subscribing and i'll be seeing you